You know what I like about astrology is you can find answers. Thanks. I'm like, that's insane. I found a ring in the Pacific Ocean. And she said, you were right. It's December, and I am having a boy. Holy. I don't think nature would make those beautiful planets for no reason. Every little degree and minute of that planet matters. I like prediction. You can, you know what I like about astrology is you can find answers to questions or challenges that are unique and more creative than the knee-jerk decision you would have made, yeah. the obvious decision. You know, let's say you're out of work. Well, maybe I'm going to recommend to you that you buy some new clothes to make you feel good when you go in there, you know? Uh, sometimes I go against the grain, especially if I see it's coming really soon. Yeah. You know, um, I think the, the most dramatic situation I ever had, <laughs> you know, I work in magazines and I, I work for so many fashion magazines and I was working for Self Magazine and Cindy Levy was still the editor-in-chief. She said, I don't think we're... we're using you well enough and you go out to LA all the time I said yeah like keep pulling me back you know so she said next time you go I want you to meet the the you know the promotion girls so we meet in a, a Japanese restaurant this this four girls and they're telling me their name and the second girl said she's Clemmy and the other girl says oh Clemmy just got married and I said oh that's so nice they're all in their late 20s and I, I said, oh, that's so nice. And then the other girl says, but Clemmy lost her ring. Aww. And I said, you lost your engagement ring? She went like this. I said, what time is it, Clemmy? She said, one o'clock. I said, no, no, exactly. I'm on computer. Do you want to know where the ring is? She said, it's 104. Okay, good. Oh, this is not what I expected. There's so much water near this ring. I can't even fathom it. There's just so much water. And I'm thinking, I hope it didn't go down the drain or something. You know, I'm, I don't. And so she opens her mouth to speak and I said, wait, there's a lot of earth signs here. There is a significant amount of wood near the ring. It's very significant. I mean, you really see it and it's big but nothing compared to the water. But the water is clean. I don't know. She said, well, I kind of know where I lost it. I said, where? She said, Santa Monica. I was in the surf, and my finger shrunk, and the ring came off. So the other girl <laughs> said, it's under the pier. That's made out of wood. You should hire divers. Susan sees it under the pier. Well... I run into one of the girls on the street in New York <laughs> six months later. And she says, you know, Clemmy found the ring. I'm like, what? Are you kidding? She said, well, you told her to get divers, sort of. We all thought she should do it. And she found the ring. I'm like, that's insane. I found a ring in the Pacific Ocean. And she doesn't call. I said, I called Clemmy. Why didn't you call me? Is it true? She said, yeah, but you knew. I'm like, oh, no, you have to tell me. You have to tell me. I'm taking a leap. Now, yeah. I had another friend. I was an agent for commercial photographers for a very long time. And I was always on the, on the phone with uh, this young woman. And I knew she, ha she told me she had a lot of miscarriages. And I felt so sorry for her. She wanted a baby so badly. And I said, well, would you like me to take a look? She said, yeah. So now I see a baby in a year and a half. <laughs> but my head is saying, don't raise her, her expectations. My heart is saying, why not? I see it. <laughs> so my head is pinging back and forth. Should I tell her? Should I not tell her? Well, you know, I tell her. You know, <laughs> how can I hold that in? I said, it'll be a boy. It's December of 18 months from now. So don't give up hope. I never talk about it again because it's just too serious. Yeah. And I'm on the phone with her a lot because she was the art buyer for Young and Rubicon. And I'm negotiating with her for the photographers because we did commercial photography. This is before 
um, I started my website. I started my website in 95, but I did the website at night and I kept the agent work going until 2002. And then both got too big and I couldn't do them yeah. both. <laughs> but when you start a business, you have to keep money coming in so you can't just quit your job. Yeah. So anyway, I said to Barrett, um, it would be so nice to have, um, I know you're Jewish, but it's so nice to have a festive lunch. I feel like I've made you up in my head. Let's go to a restaurant with lots of lights, like Christmassy, you know, and let's really enjoy it, you know. And she said, uh, I can't. I'll be on maternity leave. I'm like, what? She said, you were right. It's December and I am having a boy. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> but I said, why didn't you call me up right away? Why don't these people tell you? <laughs> because you knew. I'm like, no, I didn't. I'm taking such a leap. And, and, and I'm walking down Lexington, you know, Madison Park, and I'm worried about you. Yeah. And I'm afraid to bring up the topic because I figure you would have called and I was wrong and I've raised your expectations. But those are pretty dramatic, you know. But those are like amazing, <laughs> like, you know, s stories of like how much can be in the conditions. You, the you know when you have your right entry point. You know, the TV producers say, who's going to win the election? Like when we had in 2016. And I said, look. I make believe that I've gone to Chappaqua to see Mrs. Clinton and the Trump Tower to see Mr. Trump, and I give my whole heart to each one, and I do their chart, and then I can tell your viewers their talents, because I've studied the chart. But all of you are going to hire the president, and it depends on what traits and talents are important to you for the job. Yeah. And there is no predestination. We absolutely have to vote. Now, it is true that right now, Virgos have it just spectacularly well. And Bernie is a Virgo. <laughs> um, let's see. Amy Kobuchar, I don't know. Um, um, Biden is a Scorpio. Um, Bloomberg is born on Valentine's Day. Wow. Uh, yeah, he's Aquarius. Uh, let's see, who else is there? What's some of the others? Um, um, he did, um, let's see. Oh, Budica. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's great. I love to hear him speak. I love people who orate, you know, and he does. He's Capricorn. Now, people who have Saturn on their sun, and he also has Jupiter, are going to do well mm -hmm. because they're willing to take on responsibility. Bloomberg has a spectacular chart. Yeah. It, but it's coming at the end, uh, you know, later in the year. So, you know, it keeps changing. Oh, Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. I was just She's ask. born right on the cusp of Gemini and um, Cancer. That's why she's a good speaker. And she's also a professor. Yeah. So she's organized and presents really well and in an energetic style you know i think they're all good i mean when you listen to the debates i, yeah, I mean they all are very prepared this year very it's very prepared. very impressive um it would, well we'll see how this all goes but um you know, it'll be exciting, <laughs> and everybody has to vote <laughs> yeah and, you know if i'm traveling i get an absentee ballot and they send it to you, you know, if you yeah, know they you're going to so have simple. to go somewhere. You can just mail it in the mail, you know? Yeah. There's no excuse not to because our forefathers died for this, you know. Yeah. So we want to do it. But I, I really want people to know. People ask me, is it anti-religion? Because I mentioned I'm a, a devout Catholic. People don't understand that I feel God created the planets. We are the first generation to see them because we have... Hubble space travel, taking pictures of them. But until now, they were just twinkling little stars at the planetarium. Yeah. And um, when you're sick, <laughs> and I grew up in hospitals, I was always in the hospital, and, and I need another operation this summer on my eyes. So, you know, things keep happening, but I, I call it going to the doll hospital. You know, go to the doll hospital, get fixed up. Because <laughs> my mother actually used to bring my dolls to the doll hospital. <laughs> she said, they're going to be good as new, don't worry. <laughs> and I will be too. 
but uh, you, um, let's see, where was I going on this? Oh, oh, the oh when, not being, yeah, when you're sick, for example, when you bleed internally, that was my big problem. My veins would vanish and it become a river of blood inside, but wow. it was always the leg. There's only 47 cases in history. People have it in the head or the, up here. They can't survive an attack. They said, you're so lucky, we can tourniquet you. But they didn't even know what was wrong with me, but the leg was containing it. Wow. But I would have attacks where I would be in agony and I'd be in bed for eight weeks. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. And doctors were saying, you just don't want to go to school. You're just, you need a psychiatrist. In those days, they didn't have the equipment they have yeah, now. They didn't have the ability to scan and know what was going mm -hmm. on inside. So when they went in, it was a big surprise. So that's why I was in the hospital almost a year, 11 months. But you, for example, when you bleed internally, Mother Nature goes, okay, she's, she's really in a bad way. I'm going to collect all the red blood cells and keep them. And usually it takes eight weeks to make new blood, but when nature has collected the blood cells, it only takes three weeks. Oh, wow. And nature is really conservative. She doesn't like to do one thing she doesn't have to do. She's very efficient. Once I fell, right here in LA, I broke my wrist. It was a very clean break. So they sent me over to Cedar, Cedar Sinai. So, oh, you have a little thorn. It looked just like a thorn on a rose. He said, that might give you trouble. I said, I'm doing nothing between one and four. Do you want to go into surgery? It's like, no, are you crazy? No, you're going to go home. No, 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 I'm no. doing nothing between one and four. Let's do surgery. It's like, I'll take you out for coffee. Like, Let's just go in and fix it. But he said, no, no, you did a clean break. It's Nature's going to do it. But I'm wondering about this little thorn. But I think by the time you get back to New York, you're going to know in a couple of days. Sure enough, nature made paste out of that little thorn and used it as glue. So similarly, I don't think nature would make those beautiful planets for no reason. Yeah. And they're stunning when you look at them and how they move through deep space and, and the, the colors and everything. No, they're there for a reason. We don't know why astrology works, but it is not anti-religion because every religion, the cornerstone of it is to live up to your responsibilities, be accountable. Mm -hmm. Don't You can't blame anything on a planet. Yeah. You know, why did you steal your neighbor's pig? <laughs> because Mercury was retrograde. No, because you're a bad person. Why did you go out with your neighbor's wife? Well, she was pretty, and Venus was on my son. No, you're a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> you can't blame anything on a planet. You, you have free will. <laughs> and also the chart, which looks like a pizza pie, mm -hmm. the ninth house, which is between the 1 and the 12, uh -huh. that is the house of intellect, and it covers philosophy, but also religion, but the dogma of religion. Interesting. The 12th house, which is between the 9 and the 10 on the, the clock, is faith, whether you believe or not. It's not something you can decide it either happens or it doesn't. And, uh, and the ninth house, the other house, is where you might investigate other religions. You might be mm. interested because it's an intellectual house, but the the um, the twelfth house is also the subconscious, and it also echoes the placenta before you were born. Wow! Because the first house is when you're out in the world. So um, no, it the chart reflects you. And the part I like the best is that there'll never be another you. Even twins are yeah. not going to have the exact same chart because astrology is so excruciatingly detailed. Every little degree and minute of that planet matters. Yeah, because I mean, you they're know? they're born minutes apart. They're not born at the same exact time. Yeah, you know? and that can even, if they're cuspy, can change a rising sign or even a sun sign. And in astrology, we always look, what is the sun sign and what is the rising sign? 
the rising sign was on the eastern horizon as you were being born. Mm -hmm. And that is just as important as your birthday sign. And you have to look for the ruling planet. And let's say, um, let's say you have Scorpio rising, then Pluto is your ruler. Where is he in the chart? Because he's helping to run that chart. And what sign are you? Oh, I'm Virgo. Then, then Mercury is going to play a prominent role. And I have to see what Mercury is doing in that chart. Yeah. You know, and the, the rising sign sets the profession. Wow. It really shows the talent for the work you'll do in life. That's so I definitely think everyone should have their chart done. Not not by me, but by anybody, you know. Yeah, who, but you who do charts for people and yeah. it's, it's only fifty five dollars. It's so reasonable for your chart. Oh no, the no, I'm not chart. doing them for fifty five. No, 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 the, the the natal chart with on the website. Oh, oh, it, oh. Yeah, the, the Well, console. I was doing my personal horoscope, but we had to dismantle that for oh, okay, okay. I yeah. remembered that from the last but, one. But they can uh, go to any Good astrologer. Now, here's the problem. Yeah, I was maybe. on a TV show this morning. And she said, I went to the Oscar parties, and there was an astrologer, and he told me I'll be poverty-stricken in my life, and I, I'm going to have to have food stamps. I'm like, what? And she was, uh, she was like the studio manager of the TV show. I said, I know Uber's downstairs waiting for me, but this is important. Let, do you know your time of birth? Yeah. I said, you have Saturn in the second house. That means you save and that you're thrifty and smart with money. You're not going to pay the full price if you can get it wholesale somewhere else. You're going to make your money multiply. You're not going to be poor. You know, there are too many astrologers who are not accredited. Yeah. My mother made me study 12 years. Yeah. And I couldn't tell a soul. She said, it's not accepted. You better not tell people. You know, let's just keep it our secret. Of course, I'm on the internet now. But, <laughs> but, but, but also, like, look at how many different aspects of just, like, if, if people are listening and, and the elements when you're describing all of the different houses and the different things that are at play at these different moments. And you're, you, you, I can I really have, see it that it's like, it's like, it's like a story starts playing out, but you're, you're not in the story just so looking blinded. You're taking yourself out and looking at the bird's eye view to see all the pieces that are playing together. But then I try, when I'm writing each sign, I feel I am that sign. Yeah. I block out everything and I make believe I'm that sign. That's and what does the world look like? I'm one of the few astrologers, I don't think anyone does this, I tell you where you've been last month, how you've been feeling, what you've been coping with or trying for, what your life's been like. And then I say where you are here, and then I give a little glimpse of what's coming. I say, for example, if you didn't get the job, they may have done you a favor. I see something better coming you know, on that new moon, May 10th or whatever, yeah. you know, I try, I go backwards and forwards in time. See, it takes a long time for your brain to build the synapse. At some point you feel like giving up. You're like, oh boy, there's so much because each planet has to get along with each other, but also in your chart, you yeah. know, well, so, there's so much at play that, that, you know, it's, it takes time and you can't, I say you can't eat the whole Boston cream pie all at once. You have to go slowly. And some people are saying, oh, I'm going to study Western and Vedic, which is the Indian. I took one thing from the Indian, though. They put a lot of emphasis on the moon. And I was trying to figure out, my daughter is a Pisces, and she married a Leo, and his name is Leo. How funny is that? And he really is a Leo. And I thought, wow, well... Well, she put his fire out because she's water. But they are made in heaven. They lived together first for many years. Then they got married. And I thought, wait a minute. The Vedic people feel that if you're born after the sun goes down, the moon takes on huge prominence. And Chrissy's moon is in Aquarius, which is perfect with Leo. So now I say... If you're born at night, we have to read your chart a little bit differently. Huh. We have to put a lot of emphasis on that moon. And she's born at like 539, in, but in February, the moon, the yeah. sun had just gone down. Yeah, it's yeah. dark then. Yeah, at different times of the year, it goes down at different times. So 
Wow. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. Um, I try to. I, I am a classic astrologer. I see there are two branches: predictive and personality uh, description. Some people go back in time. How did you get along with your father? I I do a touch, maybe a little bit, but I like prediction. Mm -hmm. So that's me. But even among your friends, you're going to find just normal people. Just think of the people in your life. Some people are very past-oriented. They talk a lot about their childhood. Yeah. They, you know, a lot of people are in the present, and a lot of people in, in your circle are in the future. And we all have a different view. Yeah, we do. And where the mismatch happens is when a futurist is with a past person. Oh. Why are you constantly <laughs> looking back? <laughs> Why are you constantly looking forward, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why do you care what's coming, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, and they, it's like they, they don't understand each other. <laughs> if you like this content, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And we also have amazing link right there some cool product. I know you want to check it out. I know you want to click it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. You can do it. All right. Until next time. Have a beautiful blessed day.